back in the ring. He has had only one fight in the last year and a half. And he goes up against the scrappy Knox Brown out of Memphis, Tennessee. For the introductions, let's go to our ring announcer, the birthday boy, Ed Derry. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. It's scheduled for 10 rounds, and it's in the middleweight division. In the ring at this time, the man in charge of the scheduled 10-round middleweight bout, referee Joe Cortez. And now, my good friends, introducing the principals. First, in the red corner, wearing the blue trunks with the silver trim. He weighed in at an even 158 pounds. This gentleman has 30 wins, 13 losses, two draws, with 14 knockouts. All the way from Memphis, Tennessee. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome aboard Hyde Knox Brown. Brown. And his opponent in the blue corner, wearing the white trunks with the black trim. He weighed in at an even 163 pounds. This young man has 27 wins, two losses with 27 knockouts. The 1980 Olympic silver medalist. He is ranked number one by the World Boxing Council and is a native of Kampala, Uganda in East Africa. And now residing in Tampa, Florida. Ladies and gentlemen, here is John the Beast Mugabe. And as we enter the main event, the fight plan of the fighters. Uh, gentlemen, the rules were given to you earlier. Randy, I want a good clean fight and protect yourself at all times. Just to make this a war of attrition, to say in, in boxing terms. Um, I'm going to start at round one and I'm going to work real hard on his body, go up to the head and just try to work hard every round. That's the best way. In a lot of my fights, I've fallen behind early because I've laid back too much. I'll knock him up. I'll knock him up. I will knock him up. All right, you understand the fight plan of John Mugabe? <laughs> that has been his fight plan all along. His first 26 fights, all won by knockout before he met Marvin Hagler and lost in the 11th round. A great effort by Mugabe. That was uh, one of the best fights in a long time. Then in December of 86, against Dwayne Thomas for the junior middleweight crown, and he was knocked out in the third. Left hook in the eye. He turned his back, claimed he was thumbed. And Mugabe drifted into obscurity for the next 13 months. He actually disappeared. Manager Mickey Duff at times could not find him. He returned back on January 22nd on the undercard of Tyson Holmes and beat Brian Grant in two rounds. And that was his last fight. Every fight Mugabe's been in has resulted in a knockout. And now he goes up against Knox Brown who in just five years as a pro has fought 45 times and has never been down. He's won 30, he's lost 13, two draws, and 14 knockouts for Knox. Knox, a very aggressive fighter, not known as a, a big puncher, but his 14 knockouts are basically wearing out his opposition. Mugabe weighed 159 pounds last night, but apparently drank too much water and ballooned all the way up to 163 and a quarter and had to take off about a pound uh, earlier today and he did it by uh, shadow boxing that's a lot of water to drink what did he yep. drink the swimming pool here at the sand uh, i believe it is mugabe going to the body now going upstairs he certainly looks like he still has the punch knox brown going into his pre-vent defense trying to keep those hands high but the body shots are awesome and he's getting rocked now. He's just maybe too tough for his own good, just trying to make John Mugabe punch himself out. But you're talking about a home run hitter here, and he's just feeding him nothing but meatballs down the middle. Of, standing there. Of his 27 knockouts for Mugabe, 10 have come in the first round, and seven more in the second. 17 of his 27 have come in the first two rounds. And Knox Brown really taking a feeding. He's trying to move in on Mugabe. Part of his strategy is to get on Mugabe's chest to try to take away that punching range. Knox said, if I get hurt, I hope the referee doesn't just jump in there and stop the fight. I'm sure this guy's going to shake me up, but I just got to get past those first few rounds, and then I'm going to do it. Now, I'm not so sure that if he stands like this, he's going to be able to go anywhere. He went nine rounds before it was stopped against Michael Elagide. 
feels Elijah Day all over the ring was very difficult. Where Mugabe, at least he knows where Mugabe is, but uh, tonight so far it hasn't really made a difference. One more for good luck. And the crowd getting on John Mugabe as if he did not get enough punches in before the bell. And look at Knox Brown, 29 years old. He did not have an amateur fight. He turned pro at the age of 24. Started boxing in his backyard. He just loved the sport so much. Even took a course on boxing at Memphis State. And he fought. He started getting into it on a professional level. Because he said he was offered fights. He never thought in terms of main events. And now he's been at MSG, Madison Square Garden, against Olajuwe. Here in Atlantic City against Mugabe. He's in the twilight zone. Now you've got to really hold your breath here because if just one shot, either the right hand or the left hook, gets in. You have a feeling Knox is heading towards the canvas. And once during the first round, his legs did sag. But he's in that prevent defense, hoping to make Mugabe punch himself out. He's not going to do it like that, Al. He's got to use his legs. He's in good shape. And he's got to make Mugabe work his old, tired legs. If they are old, tired legs, right now, Mugabe's just got things going his way. Because he's got a man not throwing punches back at him. He's got a man just standing there accepting the shots, albeit on his arms. Well, when you look at the fight, initially, you say this is... Uh, somewhat of a mismatch and uh, the corner of John Mugabe uh, they say well they hope it is they feel Mugabe's got to get back into those uh, devastating early knockouts uh, for the confidence to get him wanting to be in the ring again he disappeared for 13 months and uh, there's certainly a question of his desire whether he wanted to be a boxer anymore Knox Brown coming out of the shell a little bit, lowering the hands, trying to make John Mugabe throw those shots, looking for a counter shot, but he can't find it. So he goes back into that prevent defense once again. And you notice none of the shots Mugabe is throwing are getting through. You know, Knox is known as a brawler, and he isn't unusual. Here he's a brawler. He's had 45 fights and never been down. That is an incredible statistic. He gets Michael Olajide who was at the top of his game when they fought in Madison Square Garden in August of 1986. Olajide, 6'1", moved quick on his feet, quick hands, picked him apart, and made Knox Brown open up a little bit too much. But Knox said, I'm happy I'm in there with Mugabe because I know where he's going to be, right at me. I got as much pressure here in the second round by Mugabe. Mugabe's going to try to pick his shots also. He's not going to just go firing wild shots. Two Ugandan champions, Ayub Kalule and Cornelius Boza Edwards, both managed by Mickey Duff now in the corner of Mugabe. Knox Brown tries to trade. Mugabe getting in now at will. Mugabe trying to become the third Ugandan champ. He has had two attempts, losing to Marvin Hagler for the middleweight title and then losing to Dwayne Thomas for the junior middleweight crown. And that certainly has left a bad taste in his mouth, the Thomas fight, when he backed away, turned away in the third round after he claimed he was thumbed. Well, he certainly did suffer an injured eye in that fight. There's no question about it. When that thumb drills into the eye, it's extremely painful. I just can't blame Mugabe for turning away that day. 20 seconds left in round number two. This is scheduled for 10. And Knox Brown withstanding incredible punishment through two rounds for our local cable systems. We'll pause now for these messages. Thursday Night Fights live on USA. You don't see cars like this every day. Except in the Chicago Tribune classified ads where more cars are sold than in any other newspaper around. If you've got a car to sell, you might want to give us a call. Our ads have a way of making just about anything move. MK is one of the oldest leasing companies in the country, serving many of the nation's leading corporations since 1946. 
Now we're on the scene in Schaumburg to serve your short-term rental, leasing, and used car needs. We have luxury cars, most modest economy cars, imports, and domestics. Our pre-driven one-owner cars for sale are complete with service records from day one. Best cars, best prices, best value. LK, we're the ones in Schaumburg. It is round number three. John Mugabe in the white trunks, 27 and two with 27 knockouts. Knox Brown in the blue trunks, a record of 30, 13 and two with 14 knockouts. Knox Brown, as busy as you can get, he's had 30 fights in his lad in the last three years. And watching on in the corner of John Mugabe. Trainer Mickey Duff. And a big right by Mugabe who tries for the home run again. And there goes Knox Brown for the first time in his career. He hits the canvas. Knox Brown looking for the count. We're just 40 seconds into the third round. Mickey Duff yelling out to John Mugabe to be careful. And Knox Brown almost ready to go again. He has survived everything Mugabe has thrown. And Joe Cortez rips Mugabe away from Knox Brown and stops the fight. And the crowd is booing. Well, Knox Brown became the favorite of the crowd in a hurry. The uh, underdog in this one by far. Al, he wasn't hurt. He didn't get beat up. As so many people thought he just may, a lot of people thought this was going to be just a disastrous fight. It wasn't. Knox Brown, though, had to do a little bit more. He just didn't do enough work. He stood in front of this explosive puncher, and when you're just standing there, you make Mugabe look awesome. Those first two rounds, Knox Brown took a few hard shots. But the man wasn't dazed by them. One time, he just got his bell rung once. He went back to the ropes here. Remember, he was down earlier this round. But he quickly got up. He knew where he was, and he said to the referee, Joe Cortez, I'm all right. Now he quickly protects himself. You see he's got his wits about him because Mugabe was about to slug him one more time. And then what happens, he backs to the ropes, and he's in that prevent defense once again. He was tottering. This is that knockdown. Now he covers up because he thinks Mugabe's going to hit him. That shows you that he's got his wits about him. And then he got up, drove to the ropes, stayed there, kept his hands high, Mugabe just unloaded on him, didn't really hit him with any hard shots, and the referee jumped in. Well, you can see Mugabe did work up a sweat, and this is where it ended in the third round. A courageous effort by Knox Brown to be able to withstand as much punishment as he had taken to that time, but Knox Brown becomes a sitting duck for Mugabe. Uh, how much has Mugabe learned after this uh, effort? Not, not much, I don't think. All right, let's get the official time. Thumbs up for Mugabe. Let's go to Ed Dern. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Joe Cortez stops this bout at one minute and four seconds of the third round. And the winner by a TKO, John the Beast Mugabe. Crowd doesn't like it. They wanted to see more. 104, the third round. Mugabe now 28 and 2 with 28 knockouts. And Knox Brown falls to 30, 14 and 2. Randy will be in the ring with the beast when we return. At his last tune up, Jim McGill forgot to check his engine belts. After four years, belts can break anytime. Welcome back to the Sands in Atlantic City. Thursday night fights live on USA. Well, Knox Brown, for the first time in 46 fights, hits the canvas. Uh, but John Mugabe uh, basically working on the heavy bag. TKO 104, the third round. And as Mugabe gets toweled off by trainer Jimmy Williams, he is now standing with Randy Gordon. Randy? Well, he certainly looked like the beast once again. John, were you surprised that he stood in front of you with his hands up for so long? Oh, yeah, because, you know, I knew that now I got to box a little bit to show people, you know, so I, I can box. And then I saw the target. 
Uh, I, I gotta get out here quick. Did you think he would move a bit? Did you think he would run around the ring? Because I thought maybe we may go seven or nine rounds and probably knock him in or wherever it will come. I want to ask Mickey Duff, Mickey, what did he learn by this kind of fight? You've been knocked by riders across the country for taking on this kind of opponent. No, Was it the right fight to take? I don't know who's knocking me. He's been out for 16 months. He came back weighing 188 pounds. He was so disgusted with what happened to him in the fight with Wayne Thomas when he was blatantly thumbed and got a fractured bone below the eye that he quit and he got very big. The only way to, the only way to bring him back is slowly with three or four wins. I'm going to take two... Or, now, remember, this guy's been stopped twice in 50-odd fights, and it took two real good fighters to do it. Michael Elijah Day was one, went nine rounds, and Louis Schumer, who fought for the World Junior Middleweight title, went seven rounds. So he's not an easy guy to stop. The way Mugabe stopped him today, they could easily have stopped it halfway through the first round. Okay, John, we're going to make a sportscaster out of you. We're going to take a look at the monitor, and you're going to tell us what was going on in that fight. What? Now, here comes that first knockdown, John. Did you think you heard him there? Yeah, because I saw him, you know. Now, what happened? You're about to hit him on the canvas. No, no, because that is it was, you know. I excited uh, uh, because I got experience. I can't knock him down, so. and um, I knew he's down. I was just you know for fun. When he got up again, uh, when, when he, he got up, did yeah. you did you know that that was the end? Yeah, that, uh, because he, he, uh, I saw his his face. Take a look at the monitor, and here comes the end. Yeah, I saw his face. You know, like his kind of you know legs are gone. So I dropped my bombs in there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Mickey Duff, do you bring him back again now soon, and do you bring him back against another oh, Knox yes. Brown now, opponent? Now, let me say this. He's fighting, I don't know who yet, but he's fighting on the 4th of November in Fort Myers. Uh, 4th of November? Or? Sorry, I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. He's fighting on the 4th of June in Fort Myers. We haven't finalized an opponent yet, but he's fighting on that date. After that, I want one more fight. In the meantime, in July, Rossi's fighting, uh, the, the world champion, the WBC champion, is fighting Donald Curry. The winner has been ordered that they've got to defend against us. We will be ready after that. He needs three or four warm-up fights. What weight is he going to fight at now? As a junior middleweight. And I'll tell you something. Anybody who says he can't make junior middleweight, I want to tell them something. If he really trained the way I want him to, he'd be a welterweight. Let me ask him. John, can you make 154 pounds? Yeah, easily. Because...